Nerds, I'm back and today I am so excited to say that we're gonna do something I've been looking forward to for a while. So many of you know that I love miniatures and fine details and obviously different dolls and good quality stuff, but what you might not know is that I have a very slight, big obsession with different time periods. I have always had a very small spot in my heart reserved for Victorian-esque type things. I'm very excited to announce that I'm going to begin building my new Calico Critters town. As you can see, there is a very cute, adorable Victorian type theme going on here. So this is what we're doing today. You can only see the one, but there's more. Welcome to the town where everyone goes to enjoy a day of shopping and fun. Beautiful buildings and sparkling cobblestone paths make this a special place. Take a ride on the tram to shop in all the stylish stores and eat delicious food in the restaurants. There's always exciting things to see and do. The first thing is going to be this ride along tram. And this one does not come with any figures, but it does come with some benches and the actual vehicle and a few other accessories to make it fun and like build the scene. So this is the designer studio and this one actually does come with one figure. The best thing about these are you can stack them to create kind of like an apartment or you can add it to the other buildings if you get them or just put it beside it so that it kind of makes a city. And lastly we're going to be checking out this delicious restaurant today. This one's a two-story structure and it's a, a good building point to what? A good starting point to start creating your buildings. Yes. This one doesn't come with any characters, but it does come with a bunch of accessories to help start building. I don't know what I'm trying to say. The point is they're cute and I'm excited. I'm gonna start with the delicious restaurant just because then we have a starting point for our city. I'm super fancy and overhead. Now you can see how cute it actually is. And this is for ages three and up. Although I really feel like it should probably be ages five and up because the pieces are very, very teeny. Let's open it and begin. I gotta get used to this. I don't like it. On the flap, we could just see everything that they're telling us to do and how to assemble, which is really cool. Here we go. A little teeny chef hat, some little white shorts, and the little chef coat with a red apron. On. And there we go. There's our staircase. We've got a little snack cart and our menu. That's where we're gonna put the next sticker. Okay, I've decided I didn't like that other way of filming. So here's what we're working with. This is going to be the floor and that's the ceiling. There is some roses and such underneath it. This is the rooftop, beautiful fencing type decorative piece. And that's where we'll see the name of the restaurant, which I've put on. There's cute little details in the fencing, all this fancy filigree. It makes it look like really nice architectural work and even adding some gold, it makes it seem fancy. And then this is gonna be the outside cobblestone sidewalk. Now I can actually show you the trolley. It's really cute. So they've used multiple different browns and golds to make it seem older, more weathered, antiqued, and used. It doesn't have actual wheels. It's just a push trolley. They've got some draping and stuff to make it seem fancier as well. Then we've got the menu and as close as I can get to it, I can't read it so there's not really much point in zooming in, but they've used some fancy fonts. They've got fancy molds here to make it look like it's an old nice pedestal with some filigree and roses and stuff like that as well with that same weathered gold and brown mix. Here we've got a really cute little chef coat. It's a short sleeve chef coat with red as its accent color in the form of the apron, the little tie, it's got two little things there, two little ribbon tie, and the neck. Plain shorts and an adorable little chef hat with red too so that it matches. Reminds me of like a chocolatier outfit. Here's the staircase. It's a winding staircase. These are like a cream color. It's hard to tell, but there is roses and some leaves and such on here too. And then there's really nice scalloped bordering along the bottom of each step to make it seem fancy and fit in with the rest of the look. Can you see it? I don't know. We've got two chairs here. They're very cute. Oh my gosh. They look like they're carved out of wood. They've got really nice legs, fancy pedestal type legs, and that same coloring. Different browns and golds to make it seem old and weathered and antiqued with nice little detailing on the back and it looks like it's carved. So they've added different levels to the fake wood. Something you would definitely find in a fancy restaurant or hotel or something that would fit in to an old fashioned home where somebody put a lot of love and care into all their furniture choices. Here's the second one, very cute. 
And then here's the table. It matches everything else. You can see all the shine in the golds and browns there. The light is making it stand out very nicely for you. And then even this has a nice pedestal to hold it in the center. And you can see some of the carving on the table. So it's gonna look something like that, but at a better angle after. And now we've got this white box. Let's open that up and see what's inside. These are gonna be our smaller bits. Very nice. Here are our canopies for the restaurant. This one says delicious restaurant right on it. And then we have three smaller ones and they're all nice maroony red. Then we've got three windows here. They're all framed with six individual spots, but no plastic or anything. And they've all got rounded tops and then they've all got some faux carving here. So they all just tie into the rest of the building. We've got some banisters. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> I don't know what those are called, not gonna lie. And I don't know what these are yet, but we'll find out. I'm pretty sure they're probably hooks to hold on to our spoons and such in the kitchen. They're really pretty though. Look at this cute little cake, oh my gosh. This is so detailed. This is like better than a real life cake that I've made. We've got a white three-tiered cake here. The bottom level is massive. It's got red roses, nope, doesn't. It's got pink roses on it and red strawberries. Lots of draping, little bows, lots of frosting. Sure to give you cavities in the uh, phony calico critter world. So hopefully they give you a dentist office. This is so cute. Next up we have a cake plate. This is really fancy. It's supposed to be glass. It's plastic. It's really pretty though. And you can see how nice it is. See? So not everything is going to show very well, but look at the detailing that they put into things. Like this one, you're not really even supposed to see that much because the cake would be blocking it. And yet still so detailed. How cute is that? Here we've got some plates for us to pop out. So we've got two white and yellow plates and then two scalloped white plates. One and two. Doo -doo -doo. This one is all of our cutlery. So we've got a ladle, spoons, forks, knives, and a spatula. Even those have some detailing on the front of the handles. Just pretend I understand how fancy things are supposed to be placed and pretend that's this. We get two knives, two bigger forks, two smaller forks, two big spoons, and two smaller spoons, and then a ladle and spatula. And of course, we can't forget our dinner plate and dessert plate for each of those guests. So it's like we have a dinner service here for two and then the chef utensils. Next up is our stove and countertop. It is beautiful, oh my goodness. So there's detailing in the front on these wooden panels with that same beautiful brown and gold effect to make it seem older. There's the knobs and such for the stove, which is right here. It's a gas stove, it looks like. And there's the front of it, it's very pretty. And then just a plain countertop on the side. And then lastly, we have our actual meal accoutrement. I don't actually know what that word means. Our meal stuff. We've got our meal stuff. Like you can't even see the glasses in there. They're invisible. We have a copper frying pan. Look at the bottom. Even that is detailed. That's so pretty. There's even detailing on the handle. And then we have a copper saucepan or sauce pot detailing on the bottom. Again, it's a little place card. There was one more sticker. Maybe it goes on this. And it does. It's a little happy birthday bow. It's like a little thing that sticks inside the cake. We have two fancy glasses. Maybe you'll see it better on my hand. See them? So fancy. They have detailing even in the glasswork. So there's little bubbles and stuff to make it look like the glass is shaped and formed. They're very cute. Then we have two fancier glasses. I don't even know what kind they're supposed to be. They're also very detailed and nice. So it's supposed to be a glass little pitcher to pour water out of. We also have two little scalloped teacups. They're so cute. This is gonna be easier to show you after for teeny little sipping. And then we have our dinner, I have no clue what that is though. It looks like it might be French beans with some veggies or mushrooms and chicken with a sauce times two. And then we have a side of asparagus. Where's our dessert? Oh, I guess the dessert is the cake. <laughs> Now I guess we get to start putting this together. Where am I? Over here. Now comes the part that I was talking about. You can keep adding to make these buildings taller or wider or whatever. So we can actually put this in three different spots. You can put it on the top of the building. We could put it in front of the building to extend it, or we can put it at the back of the building to extend it that way. I think for now, I'll just put it right here. We could do that with the railings as well. You can put them up there, over here, down here. Put them on the front of there. You can put them so many spots. I think right now I'm gonna put them over here because I think it will look pretty. One, two. That goes in the front. Our windows, they just pop in. And now we can put these on top of those. 
And this one here can pretty much go in any of these six spots, but I'm gonna put it over the door because it makes the most sense. So I set the delicious restaurant aside and now we're gonna open up this designer studio because we can actually add this on top of that restaurant to create another level or put it beside it to expand our city and we'll actually have a character to put inside the restaurant so that will be great. And while I'm opening this one, I'll just let you know what it says on the back. Apparently this is winged eyes and elegant style. It says, Stella works in town and designs beautiful dresses. She knows that everyone loves flowers and birthstones. So she uses those in her designs so that every customer can find a dress that suits them perfectly. She always thinks, I want everyone to feel pretty and enjoy wearing my dresses. Stella's dresses are sold in the dress shop at the department store and everybody loves them. Stella is Belle Hopscotch Rabbit's older sister. And that's that. Now I've switched back to another angle that's workable. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you what we got in this. Here's our bunny, Stella. She is a cream color with dark chocolate colored tips on her ears. Her arms go up and down. They basically rotate at the shoulder and so do her legs. And she's got a little cotton tail too. She's fuzzy, very fuzzy. It's really cute. So she's so delicately painted, just a little blushing of pink right on her nose, barely even visible, and just straight up black eyes. They do say that she had winged eyes. They don't stand out. They're sort of just part of the actual mold there's a very fine dent there she's got a really pretty dress on light pink at the top purple skirt with white stripes and lace along the bottom she's got a golden sash or belt around the middle and of course there is a jewel there because she likes to make sure every dress she makes has a beautiful jewel to reflect the dress buyers personality she looks really really cute she's got really good details and the dress itself it looks like it might have actually been put together with fishing line because you can't really see the stitching that's really awesome I sound so fake she is really cute though and it is actually really great quality we had two banisters with this set. They look very similar to the ones that came with the delicious restaurant, but just different enough for me to notice. These ones are actually more white, and it's got a little bit of a different detailing on some of the actual columns in the banister. And then we've got this piece, and then this is what's gonna go on top of the actual studio in place of like a store sign that would say a name. It's actually really pretty. There's roses, leaves, scalloped edges, multiple little layers to add dimension and depth to it, make it 3D. There's bows there. It's really Really, really pretty and it's on both sides in real life that would be insane to recreate next up we have a small table this is a coffee table and to be honest the stuff that came in the delicious restaurant was a much better quality I mean the plastic is good and the item itself is good but in regards to color this one is not the best I've seen from them so you can clearly see that it's super dark here and then it's starting to fade and warp out and on the other one that was a nice gold brown and it looked like it's supposed to be there this one kind of looks like it was just buffed too much or like running out of that color in the plastic I don't know it's it's still cute otherwise. The quality of it is good, it's just it's not the best that I've received. This is our biggest piece of furniture that we received. It's got that same color issue going on here. So I'm thinking it's supposed to just be more of a fading brown than gold brown. It's just not as pretty as the other. So this is a chaise. It's really pretty. I actually really want one of these in real life. This one is maroon and brown. There's lots of tufting in here. It's not real, it's obviously plastic, but it looks really comfy. If this was real, I would be asleep on it all day. And our last things are all of our tiny bits, so we'll have to zoom in. We've got this really cute plate. It's got a few scallops to create the edging, little details on it to make it pretty and fancy and delicate, and then it came with this cute little strawberry tart so that she's having a little dessert there. It looks really cute and fancy on this delicate plate, and then it came with a little gold fork. My hands are too big for these little things. And then once I put the fork on, this is how the cute little dessert looks. Next up we've got this pretty plain looking plate, that was too many peas, and it's got scalloped edges, it's just white, and then this adorable little teacup to go with it. These details are so fine, it's hard to see here, because obviously I'm overhead, it's it's super cute. Just take my word for it. Looks like Stella's got a nice bag here. It's a clutch purse. It's got a silver clasp on top and it looks like multiple layers of fabric to create like this rose effect and then just a little strap on the side. And lastly, we have Stella's hat. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but it's just a white brimmed hat with a brown buckle around it. And the top is open so that Stella's ears can fit through it because how else would she wear her hat? So we'll have to try that on her. Now it's time to check out the actual studio. It's actually 
I just said actually so many times. It's really, really pretty. The doors are gold and so, so detailed. They're beautiful. The building itself is a very light purple with beautiful windows and the decoration in them is incredible. So there's like wreaths and such along the top here and columns and design work all up in here. It's gorgeous. There's bows on that wreath. There's wreaths down here as well with leaf work and roses. And then there's these beautiful scalloped edges along the faux. It wouldn't be brickwork because it's not brick, but whatever that is, it's beautiful. Then on the side, we've got these beautiful large archways with faux brick as well as more of that detailing. Same as the other side. And now we're going to assemble it. First things first, we need our super gorgeous building. I'm going to add that top piece to make it look even fancier. <sighs> Stop motion. That is so cute. Before I try to add this to the delicious restaurant though, I think I'm gonna open up the tram because she's gotta pull up in style, right? So bye bye, Stella. Here we go, this is our last box to open, and this is the tram. Ooh. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's beautiful. It is so beautiful. Here's our stickers and such. So I'm gonna have to decorate this. Oh my. <laughs> All right, let's switch angles so we can have a better view. Here we have the first two items. These are the biggest things other than the actual tram. We have two benches. They're basic. They're supposed to look like they're made out of wood. They've got some beveled edging here to make it look fancy schmancy and some spots that look a little bit like they are meant to be vents. Maybe it's to protect the uh, feet during the winter and make them warm. Who knows? And then we've got this captain's area. Does a tram driver just get called a driver or a conductor or a captain? I don't know. But it's really beautiful. It's got a lot of detailing and filigree and flowers and faux rivets. We're gonna have to add some stickers to make it look a little bit more realistic, but then we can add it in and it will look really cool. There's also a gold handle here. Then we've got some gold pieces. These are definitely gonna need stickers. These are gonna tell us the signs to say tram <laughs> and where we're supposed to insert our tickets and such. At least that's what I'm assuming. So we'll get those stickers in a second. And then we've got this little felted brown hat for our conductor or driver or whatever he's called. So I'm gonna add these stickers and then we'll look at the actual tram. Oh, I put it on crooked. Mm. Oh, I put that one on crooked too. I'm not good with stickers. There's our destination button. You gotta select where you're going so that you can get your ticket. There's an advertisement in the back. We've got some new purses and varieties coming to town. And that part looks like it's done. Next up, we're gonna need our trolley signs. I like to say trolley over tram, but just go with what makes you happy. Hey, I did that one right. Woohoo! All right, it's a little crooked, but that's okay. It's just more original. So now we've got some emerald green and gold signs that say tram, and we'll attach those in a few. Now we need to actually attach a sticker on the front. Hopefully I don't mess this one up because there's only one. Good enough for me. And then there's stickers to go on the front and the back as well right there so it can light the way and i'm gonna put one on the back as well you don't need to see that just trust me there we go and lastly we just need to put on our controls and i don't know if there's a specific side they go on but i'm just gonna do whatever i like and put the gauge over there swap that to that side and then put this on this side and this little jibber and go underneath the tram i attached it down here because maybe they'll start selling more cars who knows back to this again we're gonna add some stickers along the side Ah, it's a little crooked. Perfection does not exist. There we go. Ah. That one's a tiny one. We gotta go upside down so I can see it better. There we go. It's only a little wrong. Yay! This part is complete. Now we gotta make some passes and tickets and maps. 
right here. I think we have to fold it in half. I might mess all this up right now, guys, but hopefully not. So I think we fold it in half. You get one shot at this. You cannot peel a sticker off of a sticker. Fold it up like a brochure. Well, there we go. On the cover, it says guide and map. And you open it up and it's telling you all about the delicious restaurant and the rest of the town. It's really cute, it's so tiny. And then there's a little map of the town going around and then information on a day pass and stuff like that. That's pretty adorable. And now I'm gonna try to make some tickets, like an all day ticket, a one week ticket, and then individual tickets. There you go, that one was super easy. The one day ticket is all red. On the back it's got a little swipey spot, stuff like that. There's the next one. And the one week pass is green. There's two of each. Two day passes and two week passes. And then the tickets. These are so tiny, oh my gosh. That's one, two, I'll show you in a sec. Three, four. That's what those look like. Now we get to zoom out and set everything up. Before I decorate this, guys, I wanna show off what it's like, like straight out of the box, plus my stickers. So it's a very red piece. We've got those cream colored stickers that I messed up and a lot of gold detailing and bars, guardrails, regular rails, they're guarding something. We've got some faux riveting all over. Oh, and now you know that we've got some easy glide doors. Really nice. They're not catching or anything. That's really great. And then of course we've got those emerald tram signs. The wheels down here, these ones are actually fake, so they are just decorative. They're silver, but underneath we've got two long plastic wheels and that's what actually is going to make this tram move like that. And we also have lots of panel work. On the front or the back, I added the sticker so that it looks like we've got lights. And then there's more paneling, more gold, more rivets. And then I added the hitch. On the inside, we've got some faux wood flooring and lots of different gaps here. And that's where we're gonna put our stuff. But before we do, I'm just gonna point out there's also spots up here for luggage and such. So there's grooves on the floor and we can put our furniture in like lengthwise or up and down ways like this. So I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet, but yeah, those are your options. So now I get to set it up. So it's not gonna be the easiest thing to show off because it's like a super long, narrow space, but I'll do my best right now. And do not worry because I'm gonna set everything up that we've opened so far and show off all the beautiful details in a scene. And maybe see if I can find some critters kicking around this house so that we actually have some more. What? You can have upper levels. Can you buy more benches on their own? Cause, <gasps> oh my gosh, I didn't know there was another option. So this is looking amazing. And the only problem that I'm having right now is that all these cute little things that I made out of stickers, like the tickets and the passes, there's no actual spot to keep those. It would have been cool if there was a little notch cut out of the plastic on the inside, like a little folder kind of holder, like a little pocket, so that we had a spot for all these, because they're gonna be hard to keep hold of and not lose, which is unfortunate. But this cute little felt hat is making me sad, because there's no one to wear it, so I'm gonna have to go search for some critters, and I'll be back. But when I do, I'm gonna have it set up so we could take a tour and check out all three of the sets that we opened today, and basically, the beginnings of our town. We've opened everything up, checked them out on their own, and now it's time to put them together to kind of get a feel of what my town is going to look like someday when I'm richer. The things that I do like are definitely the color combinations. How often do you see a teal and maroon, white and gold building? It stands out, it definitely does. And that tram is gorgeous, it actually just is. I know I'm just sounding like I'm trying to be happy, but I literally am. I would totally ride a giant red tram that is decked out in gold. It's just a fact. Although, I would be a little sketched out if my tram was missing half the Center, I feel like that could be a hazard. Luckily, this is a toy, and I do understand that it's there so that you could easily move the figures in and out, but in real life, not quite the safest. As for Stella's studio there, I actually really like that room. It's kind of muted. It's almost like a lilac, but like a pink dusty rose at the same time. I don't know that color, but I really do like it. And it being the color mixed with those gold doors is actually a really pretty combination. Now, I may have mentioned a time or two that I'm a giant fan of the quality 
and details and intricacies that calico critters or Sylvanian families likes to put into their items. But in case that didn't come across, allow me to tell you again that there is so much love and thought put into these. Obviously they're made by a machine, but the first person who makes the mold has put a great amount of time and detail into creating that mold. And you can clearly see that. For example, when you look at the Delicious Bakery's stove, the paneling on the front with the roses and the leaves, all the trim work, it's just beautiful. Another thing that I really do love is the actual character that came with one of my sets today. Of course there is only one and I wish there were more, but they want to make their money so they sell it separately. She is delicate and plain. It is up to me to make her whatever I want her to be. Happy, sad, sleepy. That's the quality I look for in a good toy. You need to have imaginative play. That's one thing that Calico Critters or Sylvanian Families is definitely all about and I'm really happy. They've literally been around for like 35 years and the quality is just as good now if not better than it was before. That's a big deal considering everything else always goes downhill. For example, LOLs. They started out really, really great and over time as they grew in popularity, they've been pumping them out so much they've gone downhill. And I'm very happy to say that that's not the case with the Calico Critters. There's a reason that they're still around. Now the few things that I would change if I had the ability to change anything, the tickets and the cards and stuff that were made out of stickers were kind of problematic because there's nowhere to store them. If they added something that did hold those, like a little plastic pocket inside the tram, that would be excellent. But other than that, everything is kind of perfect. Which probably does not make for quite an entertaining video. You expect more jokes, more things to mess up so that you can have a laugh or two. This is actually just a good quality product, really, really cute too. And I highly recommend that if you enjoy collecting small things or building scenes, you give these a chance because they are pretty great. If you know somebody who absolutely loves tiny woodland creatures, good quality items, or just Jen in general, then please share this video with them. And if you enjoyed this video yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below, was this too long and boring or did you find it enjoyable and informative? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!